Illumination begins with a spark. A spark in the mind. A spark in the heart. A spark in the world. It is a flicker in the dark. A candle in the night. Lighting the path. The glimmering promise of an idea. Of inspiration. Of hope. The flame attracts others like a beacon to bring their light, the light of their talent, the light of their love, joining together to shine through the dark, discerning the way toward understanding, toward insight, toward healing, toward justice. The light of faith, the light of reason, that divine spark of God in all things. It is teaching and research. It is service to others and the restless human longing for deeper truth. It is the light of tradition and light of renewal, shining through the centuries, through the cities and the countryside, into the world. The light of our leadership the light of our work, the light of Loyola, that calls us together, that calls us forward. Good afternoon. Welcome to the installation ceremony of Dr. Mark C. Reed as the 25th president of Loyola University, Chicago. I am Margaret Callahan, and I serve as provost and chief academic officer of Loyola University, Chicago. And it is my great privilege to serve as your master of ceremonies today. To all assembled here, Dr. Reed, members of the board of trustees, members of the Jesuit community, clergy and religious, alumni, esteemed faculty, staff, and students, delegates, civic leaders, benefactors, and friends, welcome. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Reed's family, to his wife, Kate, their daughters, Maggie and Lainey, his parents, and his extended family. We are honored by your presence on this very special day. As we gather here today on the shores of Lake Michigan, let us pause for a moment to focus our attention on the university's land acknowledgement statement that is on the screen and is also in your program. As we honor the heritage of the land upon which we live and work. At this time, I ask you to please stand if you are able for the presentation of the colors by the Loyola University ROTC Battalion and the singing of our national anthem. Please remain standing for our opening prayer offered by His Eminence Cardinal Blaise J. Supich. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket 
still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Let us pray. We stand before you, God of tender and loving mercies, confident that you hear our prayer on this day that Loyola University Chicago welcomes its new president, Mark Reed. We give you thanks for the board of trustees who with diligence and care have wisely chosen a new leader for this community. Quicken in Dr. Reed a spirit of boldness so that by his faith-filled stewardship, this community of learning remains ever true to its Catholic tradition and its unique Ignatian heritage and legacy of Magis. It is a tradition anchored in a profound commitment to the poor, to social responsibility, and to justice. It is a rich heritage of faith that seeks you, O oh God, in all things and in everyday life. And it is a legacy that aims at preparing students to make a difference, to seek the greater good, to take responsibility for the real world, and to become persons for others. Hasten always with your grace in moments of trial and challenge so that by your light, Dr. Reed may make wise decisions, instill in him a confidence that this community wants him to succeed so that he never fears the opinions of others nor hesitates to seek their help. We ask your blessing as well on Mark's family, on Kate, Maggie, and Laney, Give them the joy of knowing that this community cares about them and warmly welcomes them, even as the eventual cold air of winter will soon set upon this, winter, this windy city. Bless our gathering of students, faculty and staff, alumni, trustees, and benefactors, so that the manifold gifts of this diverse community May always give witness to your plan of salvation, the forming of one people after your own heart. We pray all of this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. At this historic moment of change and continuity, the Loyola community and civic leadership comes together to welcome our new president, to extend good wishes, and to offer our accompaniment in mission. I invite the speakers to introduce themselves and offer their greetings. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brianna Allen. I currently serve as the chair of Loyola University Staff Council. Dr. Reed, as you join our community, I reflect on Father Arturo Sosa's 2020 letter to his brothers. Father Sosa acknowledges the persistent tension between cura apostolica and cura personalis in these changing times. 
writing, mission must be the fundamental criteria that unifies cura apostolica and cura personalis, and that the growth in the partic participation of others in our mission places the community work relationship in the new and challenging perspective of cooperation. In the spirit of cooperation and Loyola's mission, I invite you to engage with my staff colleagues through open and ongoing dialogue in order to build a stronger collaborative mission-focused relationship. We are eager to know you and share our Loyola with you. On behalf of University Staff Council and the staff of Loyola University Chicago, I welcome you to the Rambler family. Good afternoon, Dr. Reed, members of the board, colleagues, current and former students, and friends of Loyola. Thank you all very much for making the time to be here. Uh, my name is Jim Devery. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry in the College of Arts and Sciences, and I am the chair of Loyola's Faculty Council. It is my great privilege to speak on behalf of the more than 1,000 faculty of this institution and to welcome Dr. Reed into our community. Here at Loyola, we are called to teach, to think differently, and to ask questions. And we look forward to the lessons and thoughts and perspectives you're bringing to us. Just as our innovative faculty, our indispensable staff and administrators, and our devoted alumni help our ramblers become their best selves through personal and career development, meaningful relationships, and physical, social, emotional, mental, and spiritual wellness. Dr. Reed, we are excited to work alongside you to help Loyola become its best self. Thank you for your service. Good afternoon. To my colleagues, faculty, staff, students, alumni, honored guests, my name is Tobin Fryer and I serve as Loyola's Assistant Vice President for Enrollment Management and Director of Financial Aid and Chair of University Senate. Dr. Reed, on behalf of the members of University Senate and the Executive Committee, it is my pleasure to welcome you and your family to the Loyola University Chicago community. Loyola's shared governance plays an important role ensuring, all, uh, ensuring accountability uh, at all levels um, at the institution. As chair of University Senate, a governing body that is comprised of students, faculty, and staff, we look forward to engaging you in meaningful conversation and supporting your vision of making this mission-driven institution an even greater place to learn and work. Loyola has been home to my family and me for the past 17 years, and I know you will continue to see why this is such a special place. We welcome you to Loyola. My name is David Kupiak, proud undergrad alum of the class of 1986, parent of two Loyola students, and president of Loyola's National Alumni Advisory Board. It is an honor to be here today as we celebrate the inauguration of Loyola's 25th president, Dr. Mark C. Reed. As the president of Loyola's National Alumni Advisory Board, I have the great privilege to partner with the university in leading our engagement efforts of more than 160,000 Loyola alumni across the world. In his first month at Loyola, I have already had the chance to watch Dr. Reed interact with many of our alumni during Alumni Weekend just a few weeks ago. His energy, enthusiasm, and sincere passion for Loyola's Jesuit mission comes through in all he does. As we look ahead into engaging more alumni in the work of Loyola, I know that Dr. Reed will be a visible and supportive partner in our efforts. Dr. Reed, on behalf of all our Loyola alumni, congratulations on your new role and know that our alumni are here to support you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hannah Kwok. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a third year undergraduate student majoring in history and theater, and I'm the president of the student government of Loyola Chicago for the 2022-2023 term. I have the opportunity to welcome Dr. Reed today because of the incredible people that have supported me throughout my Loyola experience. 
Exactly two years ago, I was in my tier one statistics class in my desk in my childhood bedroom in Columbus, Ohio. I was a first year at Loyola, and I wouldn't have been able to identify a single building on any of our campuses, but even after my first month online, I could tell how embracing, supportive, and resilient our community is. The student government of Loyola Chicago is just one piece of our larger system striving to strengthen our university community by creating a culture of embedded wellness, student success, and care for the whole person while celebrating and supporting the diverse backgrounds within the student body. Dr. Reed, we are excited to work with you and engage with your passion as we continue to uplift our peers. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Emmanuel Chris Welch, and I am Speaker of the Illinois House of Representatives. I want to thank Loyola University for asking me to attend this celebratory event. And thank you to those of you in attendance who have gathered today as we honor Loyola University's 25th president, Dr. Mark Reed. That is a major accomplishment. And Dr. Reed, on behalf of the state of Illinois, welcome. You know, you're used to the cold, so you'll be okay. You know, you're joining us from the Keystone State, which includes the chocolate capital of the U.S. Philadelphia was once the capital city of our nation. But as you get to know me and you come visit me in my Springfield office, you'll learn very quickly that I have an affinity for baseball. You know, I know the first baseball stadium was built in Pittsburgh, but you'd never experience baseball like Chicago baseball. <laughs> Did you know that Wrigley Field has housed more Hall of Fame athletes than any stadium in the country? One of those Hall of Fame athletes we can thank you for. Ryan Sandberg, the greatest second baseman of all time we got from the Philadelphia Phillies. And I'm convinced he's going to be thanking me in a few days, thanking us in a few days, because another one of those Hall of Famers one day will be Kyle Swarber, who will be a Philly legend in the next couple of days, because I predict he'll be the reason the Phillies win the World Series. <laughs> in all seriousness, though, Dr. Reed, welcome to Chicago. As the first black lawmaker to become Speaker of the House in our state's history, diversity, equity, and inclusion, thank you. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is always one of my top priorities, and it is certainly my understanding from studying your history that that is something that you value. You've always worked to increase percentages of first-year students of color and students from underrepresented communities at your previous institutions. We are so happy to have you in Chicago. We tell young children all the time that no dream is too big. And here in Illinois, we mean it. There should be no barriers to our dream. As our first black speaker, I'm living proof of that. And I want to do everything in my power to ensure that every child and every student has the chance for success. And while we have made great progress in the state of Illinois, there are still challenges ahead. And I know that working with presidents like you, there are many more great days ahead. As humans, as Illinoisans, as Americans, we are all partners in these battles. We cannot do anything alone. I have told our caucus consistently for 22 months to read a book by a gentleman named Simon Sinek. He says, start with why. But I've said to them, it should, he really should have titled it, start with why and end with why. Dr. Reed, I know you're a why guy. That's very important. And I will say, continue to find your calling. Continue to find your motivation. Continue to find your conviction. Continue to find your why. Continue making Loyola University one of the best universities, not just in this state, but in this country. Let's continue working together to make Illinois the best place for education and the best place to call home. Go Ramblers.
Thank you, Dr. Lee. We are honored and pleased to have with us the very Reverend Carl J. Kaiser, Provincial Superior of the United States Midwest Province of the Society of Jesus. Father Kaiser and Dr. Reed, would you please come forward to the center podium. At our last general congregation, the highest governing body of the Society of Jesus, we declared solemnly that an institution can be said to be Jesuit when it has a clear and definitive relationship with the Society of Jesus, and when its mission aligns with that of the Society by a commitment to a faith that does justice through interreligious dialogue and a creative engagement with culture. In such a context, the mission of the institution whether administered by a Jesuit or by another who shares this commitment, will ultimately be accountable to the Superior General of the Society of Jesus through the appropriate lines of authority. Leaders must have a commitment to the mission of the Society of Jesus as realized in a particular work. In developing a relationship between the Society and a Jesuit institution, it is vital that the local provincial engage and support those entrusted with leadership. Regular dialogue conducted in a spirit of trust serves to promote discernment, accountability, and a clear sense of collaboration for mission. The local superior and the local Jesuit community do much to foster the connection between a Jesuit ministry and the Society of Jesus. Dr. Reed, the Board of Trustees of Loyola University Chicago, after rigorous discussion and due diligence, has asked that the Society of Jesus mission you to be president of the university. Founded in 1870, Loyola University was established and entrusted to the Society of Jesus. As the provincial of the Midwest Jesuit province of the society, I ask whether you are willing to accept this mission. I am. Will you shape your decisions in accordance with the mission of the Society of Jesus? This by a commitment to a faith that does justice through interreligious dialogue and a creative engagement with culture. I shall. Will you regularly enter into a dialogue with the Society of Jesus through its legitimate superiors concerning those matters which touch directly upon its Catholic and Jesuit mission? I shall. Will you foster within the Loyola community its Catholic and Jesuit mission through a pattern of leadership modeled after Christ who came to serve and not to be served? I shall. With gratitude for God for the gift of your leadership of this great institution of higher learning, and in recognition of the extraordinary gift that Loyola Chicago is for the church and the society, I mission you to serve as president. I promise that we and the Jesuits will support you in your work, collaborate with you in fostering the mission we share, and through prayer, witness, and service, foster the work of this wonderful university. And may the gracious mercy and wisdom of our God displayed so fully in the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus be your constant support and beacon throughout the days of your ministry. Amen. At this time, I invite Susan Chair, Chair of the Board of Trustees of Loyola University Chicago to come forward for the investiture of Dr. Reed as Loyola's new president. Ms. Shear will be assisted in the presentation of the chain of office by Father Richard Salmi of the Society of Jesus, Rector of the Jesuit Community at Loyola University, Chicago. Thank you, Provost Callahan, and good afternoon. I'm honored to be here on such an exciting and historic day for Loyola. Dr. Reed, the Board of Trustees of Loyola University, Chicago, has elected you the 25th president of the university. Your outstanding track record of strong leadership and a deep understanding of the life-changing power of a Jesuit education prepares you well to lead Chicago's Jesuit Catholic University, a diverse community working to expand knowledge in the service of humanity through learning, justice, and faith. 
We look forward to your presidency as you, with the support and guidance of the Board of Trustees, build on Loyola's strength and provide a vision and strategic leadership to guide its future academic excellence and its impact on the city, on the state, on the nation, and on the world. And now, by the authority granted to the Board of Trustees, I, as Board Chair, entrust to you the presidency of Loyola University Chicago. With the help of Father Richie Salmi, Rector of the Loyola Je Jesuit Community, we will now place over your shoulders the presidential chain of office. This sterling silver medallion of Loyola University Chicago symbolizes the 152-year history and legacy of our Jesuit Catholic tradition. It includes an etching of the Loyola family crest, our 1870 date of founding, and the Latin motto for the Society of Jesus, Ad Maiorum Dei Gloriam, for the greater glory of God. This emblem and chain are the official symbols of the Office of the President of Loyola University Chicago. The names of Loyola's 24 past presidents are engraved on the back of the emblem, and the center link has now been engraved with Dr. Reed's name as our university's 25th president. So, on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the leadership of the Society of Jesus, we present to you Dr. Mark C. Reed, the President's Medallion of Loyola University, Chicago. It is, it is now my great pleasure to present to all of you the 25th President of Loyola University Chicago, and, um, and I invite Dr. Reed to, provi to provide remarks. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Thank you, Cardinal Supich, Provincial Superior Kaiser, Chair Susan Scher, and the Loyola Board of Trustees. Thank you, Provost Callahan and Father Salmi. I deeply appreciate the greetings and the good wishes from the members of our university community and elected officials. We are all honored by the presence of delegates from colleges and universities from around the world. And thank you very much to our students, faculty, and staff, and to all of our distinguished guests for being here today. It's wonderful to have you here, and you honor Loyola University Chicago by your presence and your participation. This is truly in, in, incredible. Um, it, it's, it's overwhelming. Um, but I am extremely moved by, by everything that has happened today and, and especially by the ceremony. Um, my family, I know, shares those feelings of being moved, energized, and humbled all at the same time by the warm welcome we have received from so many members of the Loyola community. And thank you, thank you, thank you to all the people who organized and put together this wonderful day of events and celebration for Loyola. They're the ones who deserve a round of applause, so please join me in thanking them. <laughs> and
As I have received well wishes from colleagues across the country, many of them have commented directly about Loyola's ascent, scope, and impact. Now, I certainly know this is accurate, but to hear it expressed by others is welcoming. And I have watched over the years during my career as Loyola became a leader in Jesuit higher education and a leader among American universities. And in my discussions with Loyolans over the past few months, I sense confidence, a strong sense of our identity, values, and direction. What sticks with me, though, is their warmth, their commitment to this university, and awareness of the challenges we face, and yet a sense of optimism about the work ahead. What a wonderful situation as the new president to come into. Now, I am lucky to be joined today by several friends and family members, my parents, sister-in-law and brother-in-law, lifelong friends, friends from St. Joseph's and Fairfield Universities, and others watching online. I cannot adequately express how much you all mean and how important you all are to me. And most especially, I'm so happy to recognize my wife, Kate, and our daughters, Maggie and Lainey. I could never do this job without your unconditional love and support. Our family has always been part of university communities, and we are honored to now call Loyola home. I also feel a proud sense of gratitude for the work and the leaders that have come before me at Loyola. My three immediate and living predecessors, Dr. Joanne Rooney, Father Michael Garanzini, and Father John Pitterit, on the vision of their own forebears, built Loyola into a leader in global Jesuit education for the 21st century. They established the firm foundation from which we conduct our mission today. And I thank Dr. Rudy for her graciousness and her support during the transition and valued the conversations we had and the perspective and advice she offered. As some of you know, I have known Father Garanzini for many years and continue to work with him through the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities. And on a personal note, an excellent piece of career advice he once gave me many years ago has likely played some role in my standing before you today. And Father John Pitterit, the 22nd president of Loyola, is with us this afternoon, and please join me in recognizing and thanking him for a life of service. Father Pitterit. I had not met Father Pitterit in person before today, but I'm honored that he accepted our invitation and traveled uh, to be here. I will take this occasion to remind Father Pitterit of a letter his predecessor, Father Raymond Baumhart, wrote to him in July 1993 with words of advice as Loyola's presidency was transitioning between these two Jesuits. I have a copy for you later if you would like it. There are 19 items in the letter. Why 19 and not 20? I don't know. But there are 19, ranging from, quote, never act after hearing one side of the story. There are always two sides or more. To, quote, don't be upset if, as president, I get blamed for something in which I had no part. I get credit for many which I hardly know about. And one more, which hopefully will give you all comfort about my remarks this afternoon. Quote, Inasmuch as the time for listeners is important to them, I should prepare for every talk and never speak longer than is necessary or appropriate. <laughs> so then you may be relieved to hear that I only have three points I want to make today. One, 
is expressing thanks. Two is about accompaniment as a guiding principle. And three, some Ignatian words and Ignatian wisdom to live by. And I've already covered point one. So we're moving right along to point two. I am a product of Jesuit education and of years of experience at Jesuit institutions, and I remain immensely grateful for the ways that has helped to shape me. I've been blessed with wonderful teachers and mentors, many of them Jesuits, who have had deep impact on my life, and they do to this day, encouraging me, providing opportunities, helping me discover who I am, and maybe, more importantly, whose I am. I am a proponent of Jesuit education because I have experienced its awesome power and impact. So I stand before you today in large part because of the accompaniment of Jesuit teachers and mentors and their companions. As the Superior General of the Jesuits, Father Arturo Sosa has written, the notion of accompaniment is intimately linked to Ignatian spirituality and pedagogy. Quote, it always includes an element of personalized care and attention for the individual. The key thing, he said, is being there. Being there with and for our students and with and for each other. Our unique approach as a Jesuit institution comes from a tradition of personalized education that is also woven through the university's academic and professional culture. The mission is continually revitalized by the vision of our community and the renewal that comes from consulting each rising generation. This is the energy of, a, of accompaniment. And I am inspired by your accompaniment. Since beginning my role a month ago, I have had the pleasure of meeting and speaking to hundreds of Ramblers. At the Alpha Sigma Nu induction last week, I met this year's student inductees to the National Jesuit Honor Society from across our campuses. On St. Albert's Day at the Health Sciences Campus, I spoke to students and faculty collaborating on research that will help advance treatments and healing. And last week, I was delighted to converse with student leaders at a student government banquet. And at Alumni Weekend last month, I had the pleasure of hearing from generations of alumni the ways in which Loyola has shaped their lives and values. I've walked the campuses and facilities as an attentive observer of all I could see and hear. I have a lot more to learn. But accompaniment at Loyola happens in myriad ways, far too exhaustive to list here. So I offer, therefore, just a couple of examples. Accompaniment is working with our community to steward expertise and resources to create spaces and capacities for advanced scholarship, research, and interdisciplinary collaboration. Accompaniment means continuing to build our capacity and deepen our ability to reach out to and advance the success of students for whom college and professional education is critical to economic and social mobility and otherwise would not be possible without financial and other support services. Accompaniment means sustaining the momentum of our mission for the 21st century. It means advocating for the work of faculty, staff, and students. It means telling the stories of the work to key constituencies. It means representing the case for a comprehensive campaign that enables us to invest strategically in the things that matter most and will advance this institution. For me as president, accompaniment means staying engaged in collaboration with our campus community and regularly going into the larger community to build relationships with partners and civic leaders to represent your work, our work, and acquire the resources that will generate opportunities and drive innovation. Accompaniment means modeling reflective and meaningful civil discourse. Probably no greater time for that in our lives than today. It means being a university in every sense of the word while ensuring our Catholic and Jesuit identity and mission are ever present and visible to all. It's about listening to each other 
and continuing our work collaboratively in a manner that embraces and respects the depth and breadth of our colleges and schools, our multiple campuses, and the diverse functions and voices of a complex university. It's about embracing the inherent dignity and value of all persons. For when you accompany someone, it is impossible to deny this or to see that person as other. For me, accompaniment means being, becoming part of the life of the university to formally and informally participate in Loyola's many good works and to witness the light of excellence all around us. It is about interacting with students as a way of checking in, seeing how they are doing, seeing how we are doing in caring for them and how we are accompanying them in their journey. Last spring, Loyola virtually hosted Pope Francis in dialogue with students from across North and South America. As the Pope listened attentively to the questions, hopes, and fears of these students, he responded thoughtfully and gently, reminding the students of the ways they might take individual action on climate change, poverty, global conflict, and more. He did not exhort, preach, or impose solutions. Rather, he listened to their stories, let their questions resonate, and affirm the importance of their experience. His openness to the sometimes challenging questions from the students, his accompaniment of them, is a model we can emulate. So today we honor our past, we celebrate our present, and we imagine our future. In this Jesuit Catholic University, that is a home to people of many faiths and traditions, Ignatian accompaniment is all around us. We can feel it in this arena, gathered with one another around our history, our values, and our future. We see it every day in our classrooms and labs, in our hospitals and clinics, in our studios and performance halls, in our neighborhoods. We see it in our students, faculty, and our alumni, in the vision and solidarity of supporters and friends. Let us today affirm and recommit ourselves to the spirit and practice of accompaniment. Now, November marks Ignatian Heritage Month at Loyola, a time when we sponsor programs about and reflect on our Jesuit values and history. So we've reached my third point, and I will conclude my remarks on this topic. There is a somewhat obscure and certainly less familiar to most Latin phrase that Jesuits sometimes use to talk about a simple practice that St. Ignatius developed to promote an openness to change. The phrase is agere contra, and it literally means to act against. It's not about being oppositional or combative. Rather, the concept refers to identifying behaviors or practices that may be familiar, but no longer productive, and we should intentionally try to act against them. These are things that make us feel safer, perhaps, our routines, our doubts, and unwillingness to be pulled out of our comfort zones. And in Ignatius's view, he was teaching himself and his Jesuit companions to go against those things that prevent or form a barrier to closeness to God. Now this phrase resonates with, as my family and I deal with change, in a new city, in a new job, and future new schools and friendships, we will feel at times a longing for the old and the comfortable. As we at Loyola embrace challenges and new opportunities, we too can and must act against practices and tendencies that no longer advance our work or stand as obstacles to Loyola's advancement, stature, and impact. And there is one other Ignatian motto I want to share with you because I appreciate it as well. And that is the Latin phrase, agi quod agis, which literally means, do what you are doing. The point here is, whatever your role, faculty, staff, undergraduate student, graduate student, medical student, law student, alumnus, alumna, human being, act, advocate, whatever you are, whatever your role is here, throw yourself wholeheartedly into it. It's not about routines. 
It's about doing what you're doing with passion, with conviction, and with purpose. Bring your full self, your full capacity, your full heart and love to the project, your full presence to the people all around you. Aji quote Ajis in this Ignatian Heritage Month is a good touchstone for us all. I am deeply honored to join this community and to put myself at its service. And today I pledged to you to bring my full capacity, my full experience, and my full heart to the work of Loyola University Chicago. Together, we will accompany our students and one another to help create a future filled with the good works that foster possibility, opportunity, and hope, all for the greater good of Loyola. Thank you again for the warm welcome. Let us take pride and go forth, mindful of Sister Jean's words that Loyolans worship, work, and win. <laughs> go Ramblers. Thank you, Dr. Reed. We are so very grateful for your inspirational and visionary words. We all are ready to assist you, to accompany you, as you lead our beloved university forward. Loyola University Chicago, a Jesuit Catholic university, is also home to people of many faith practices and traditions. Here to offer blessings to our new president and to the entire university community, our leaders from among these traditions. I welcome to the podium Omar Mosafar, instructor in the Department of Theology and Muslim chaplain, Lizzie Mintz, Jewish life associate, Sahiti Manarapu, undergraduate student and puja room coordinator for the Hindu student organization, and Miguel Saron Becerra, graduate student and member of Loyola's Jesuit community. I'm going to read the first surah of the Quran. First, I will give it in translation and then the original text. We begin in the name of God, who is most merciful, eternally merciful. All praise and gratitude are due to God, the cherisher, the sustainer, the nourisher of all the worlds. He is most merciful, eternally merciful, and master of the day of judgment. You alone we worship. You alone we ask for help. Guide us on the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored, not on those whom is anger, nor of those who are astray. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا الصراط والمستقيم صراط والذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغدوب عليهم ولا الضالين In Pirkei Avot, a traditional Jewish collection of wisdom, we are taught that the world stands on three principles. One, the study of Torah. Two, prayer. And three, 
deeds of loving kindness. Dr. Reed, may you lead our Loyola community in our quest for academic excellence. May you uplift our diverse faith traditions and communities, and may you serve with loving kindness. I'm going to say a prayer from Lord Ganesha, who is the God of new beginnings, and Lord Saraswati, the Goddess of Wisdom. Om Gam Ganapatai Namaha Sharnam Ganesha Om Ayn Shreen Shreen Vagdevyai Saraswatai Namaha Dear God, bless President Reed and the community of Loyola University of Chicago with three gifts, love of you and love of neighbor, hearts that are close to the poor and marginalized, and a servant's attitude that washes the feet of the people in our care. In Jesus' name, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray, amen. I thank you once again for coming together with us as we mark a new chapter in Loyola University history. Your presence today has made our celebration very special. We are excited to proudly show how our diverse community comes together to walk through change as part of a living legacy of renewal and innovation. Following the alma mater, the stage party will exit to the Damon Student Center atrium, and we look forward to celebrating with all of you at the community reception. So as we close our ceremony, and I invite you to join the University Chorale and join your voices in our alma mater, Hail to you, Loyola. Please stand. is strong.